for this try on. We are trying on a lot of new makeup, including these hourglass palettes. I try them on for you side by side. We also have the Jaguar palette by Chantikai. Finally trying this out with the lip shades. I also have other new products that we're trying out. So just lots of new products, lots of exciting products. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm currently watching along with you the live video. So a lot of you have said hello. So thank you for tuning in and watching that video. So I'm currently just watching it on mute, but I'm looking for any questions or clarification that you would like or any swatches. So it's around six o'clock right now that I am filming this. We'll go in with the Vanish primer. So this is the primer, sorry, I didn't show it to you. It goes a little bit faster if I don't embed the images here. So I'm gonna just hold them up because that way I can edit this and get this up right away. So I went in with this. So someone said, you love the elephant um, palette. Yeah, it's really cute. I can see a lot of people loving the elephant palette. We're gonna go in with the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation and the Spite Hourglass. I have mine in the shade 7.5. So this is the newer foundation that they have. Going with my Shiseido brush. Ooh, it's got powder on it. Everything has powder. I must have spilled powder. For those who are new here, I prefer a peach toned foundation, even if it's gonna be a little bit lighter. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Chantecaille Anti-Aging Face Tint. It's a little bit deeper than my skin tone. I'm gonna to mix it in with this Hourglass product just for my forehead. It's this color. So I'm gonna mix it in with the foundation just to deep, cause it's really light on my forehead. So we're gonna just blend those together, just like that. I'm also featuring other items in the unboxing. Yeah, someone said elephant please. I know, I'm excited about that one too. So we'll do that one and the, I think butterfly, we'll do side by side just so you can see the difference. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint, just under the eye. It looks like this, if you haven't seen it before. It's got like a pudding texture almost to it. A little goes a long way. Is the bottle heavy? Oh, on the fragrance, the cover. yes. Oh, someone wants to see the Tiger palette next to one of the Charlotte Tilbury palettes, but I don't have that one. Otherwise, I would do that for you. But thank you for the request. Maybe there will be another request that I actually have a palette for. Oh, someone said they just caught the live video finally. Yes, yeah, sorry. They just kind of go up at random times based on when the product comes in. But thank you for joining us. We've got the Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. This is in B30. It's a little light for me, so I use this under the eye. Thank you for commenting, by the way. I'm um, trying to watch them while I do this, so... I wish I had more hands and I could actually respond. Going with a Clay de Peau concealer in Mocha, perfect for my dark spots. My husband got that Batman fragrance, he loves it so much. Okay, so we've got finishing powders, but I also want to set first. So we're gonna go in, going to go in with the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder. And I'm going to use the Chantecaille Buff and Blur Brush, which I love together. So I want to go in with this Ciate Micro micro blade brow <laughs> that I unboxed. We're gonna do this first. Usually I go the other way around, but I wanted to see how this went. It's got a little bit, just a little bit more red than I like, but I like the concept. Okay, that was really quick application. So that was quick. I can see though, you really need to make sure that this cap goes back on or else it'll probably dry out. I do your show onset brow and I'm going to actually go ahead and do that one off camera and then I'll, cause then that'll let me turn the air conditioning on. And I'm also going to add this Chantecaille eye base. This is the next generation eye base in medium. So let me go ahead and do that. I love my dark spots kind of lightly concealed so we can see how the powders do if they do any blurring for me. And just a little bit of La Prairie. This very sad looking <laughs> concealer uh, that I've had for a long time. Definitely getting my money's worth out of this one. I know so many of you have been waiting for this palette. This is the Jaguar palette by Chantecaille. I was so excited about this when I saw it. Gosh, when they first launched it, because it's so beautiful, I've already gotten into it a little bit because I wanted to just play with it and 
play with it and figure out what to do with it because while I love the colors, it's a little bit, I was a little unsure of where to place the colors. I've seen some examples online of the finished product. I haven't seen anyone apply it yet. I try not to watch any videos on products before I try them. I'm gonna just place it right here on the corner. Usually I will go in later, as you know, with something darker, but, and I don't normally do eyeshadow this way. Oh, it really packs it on. I don't usually do eyeshadow like this, but it didn't make sense for me to put this in the crease either. So I'm just patting it here first. Always a little creasing right there. And it's kind of messy, but that's okay. Cause I'm gonna put a color over it. I'm gonna put this bronze shade, or I think they call it a copper shade on top. And it's just gonna blend nicely into that color, but it's gonna give me a little bit more dimension than if I just went in directly with this, which I love, but I just wanted to put that deep shade to use. It's kind of taking that idea, that Pat McGrath idea of putting the liner down first to create the shape of the eye and then going in on top with shadow. So not my idea. I'm just adapting it using a shadow. So I just used it to intensify the coppery shade. And then I'm just doing this, just pulling the color out with this shade and sweep brush, which is by Chantecai. I'm gonna take my Chantecaille, I'm just gonna dip that into this blue shade, which I think is so stunning. And I'm going to just press that along the lash line. Just make a little wing. And we're gonna go underneath, just stamping it right along the lash line. Okay, I also wanna take a little bit of that copper shade and run that under the eye as well. I've had a little Esam brush, a teeny tiny one. This is the uh, V09. And then we're going to go in with another Esam product, one of the eyeliners that I unboxed. This is in the Brilliance and Sapphire. So I'm gonna tight line with the Sapphire because it's got that bluish tone to it. I kind of don't want to add this, but I just am curious. So we're going to take that whitish, whitish shade and I'm going to just pop that right in the center really gently. So there's a difference, just slight, just the littlest addition. So it's never even when I do my eyes on the end, so this helps balance everything out. And that's what this really helps with, the brush, because it's such a clean line on the edge of this brush. This is the Clay de Peau Concealer Brush. Okay, I'll fix that a little bit more if needed after mascara. I wanna go in with this Ciate mascara because it sounded really amazing. So we're gonna test it out. I love volume length. So we're gonna try and see if we can build this up in three coats. Okay, so that's one. They're a little like fluffy, the lashes. Okay, so first coat, let me add two more coats here. Seems like a drier mascara. You know how some of them are, you can tell they're when they're new, they're not as dried out. This one is like a drier consistency. Yeah, volume is very nice on this. Just trying to not get any clumping here though. You kind of have to maybe just do one eye at a time, I think, because this one dried out a little too much over here. In between, a little bit of clumping here. So maybe do one eye at a time. I'm not gonna touch them anywhere. They look pretty good. Let's try just a little on the lower lashes. This wand is a little bit bigger though, so just have to be careful. I love this eyeshadow, really easy to use. It's Chantecai, so Chantecai is like a no fuss kind of makeup company if you've ever tried them. Um, really lovely product. And if you're not familiar with 
familiar with Shantikai, they have so many products that benefit wildlife conservation. Finally, the pellets. So actually, one of you just left me a comment that you would like to see tiger versus elephant, um, but I have butterfly today. So the next time I do this, I'm going to, I was just gonna use the tiger pellet, but I will compare tiger with elephant the next time because I have another Shantikai pellet. I also have all of the tweed pellets by Chanel I have not featured on my face yet. Let me know what you'd like to see and I'll pair something with the tiger versus elephant. But today we're gonna go in with these. So yeah, it's funny that I don't know why just elephant has bronzer. It would have made sense for all of them to have bronzers, some kind of bronzer. Yeah, it's a little strange. I don't know if I fully understand the reasoning. Well, no, I don't understand it all the reasoning, <laughs> but I know that this one seems to make the most sense. They do say to use the ambient lighting edit brush, which I don't think is the best brush for these products, except that they fit in the pan. I think that's what's good about these brushes, but I have better brushes that I like. Um, so we're gonna go in with this Wayne Goss brush, this artist brush, and we're going to use the bronzer all over because that's the only bronzer we have. And this fits in here nicely, but this is not available, this brush. But if you have it, um, it fits nicely in there because I like it for bronzer. So let's go ahead with the bronzer first. Building slowly. Okay, already I feel like this bronzer was made for me. Yeah, it's just tricky with these pans not to pick up other product. I guess I could have done the finishing powder. I don't know, I got excited about bronzer here. Let me do the bronzer first. Oh, but now you can see a little bit of my, we're just gonna not worry about that blemish. It's being very fussy these days. I'm gonna do half so you can see the difference. Oh, beautiful. This is a warm blush, not a blush, a bronzer. So those of you who love the Guerlain bronzers, you're gonna love this one. If you don't like Guerlain bronzers, I don't know if you're gonna like the tone on this because it is quite warm, but I love it. So we've got here bronzer, no bronzer. Let's even this out. So I'm gonna bronze both sides just because we don't have bronzer in the other palette. Okay, so let's test out some of these finishing powders. Ethereal light, and also we have diffused light. Ethereal light, it's the cooler of the two, this one. And let's put that, I don't know, under the eye. I don't usually powder under the eye, but I'm not sure where we can put this, but just so you can see it on my skin. Oh, you know what this is reminding me of? This is reminding me a little bit of the clay de peau powder that they discontinued. It's reminding me a little bit of that. Okay, let's take this warmer one right over here, right on the cheekbone area so it can pop. Okay, I thought this one wasn't going to work for me, but for this purpose, that might solve the fact that I don't have a clay de peau new luminizing face enhancer in a shade that's going to work for me. So I'm taking um, diffuse light. I'm glad I'm trying this because I would normally not pick up this shade. This diffuse light, it's the warmer of the two and I'm just placing it right up here, right on top of the uh, cheekbones to bring out the, uh, I think this might be the same thing. I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's delivering similar results in that it's bringing about bone structure. There's no detectable shimmer. It's uh, like a skin perfecting kind of product. Oh wow, okay, so this is something I never would have tried. I'm very pleased with this. Okay, so maybe this is something you would like if you are my tone and you're looking for something like um, the Clay de Peau. Okay, let me just watch it. Let's just look. So here's a product I'm talking about. They came out with a new version of it that's got a lot of shimmer in it, but these powders are reminding me of each other. So here we have the Hourglass powder and here we have the Clay de Peau. Ooh, and the clay de bow has a little bit more um, of a glow to it. So there's even less glow in this powder. <gasps> how exciting. Okay, I'm very excited now. If you know how disappointed I was in the new clay de bow, this might take its place. Yay, I'm so excited. So I'm gonna let that just 
see how that works out for me and I'll keep you updated, but I'm very happy with that. Let's go in with the blushes. So these blushes, yeah, someone mentioned that this is geared towards lighter skin tones, but the blushes are very vibrant. So for a light palette, the blushes are not light at all. Okay, we're gonna go in with this one first, number four. No, number six, no, just kidding. Number five, let's go in with Sunset Glow first. Let's go in with this one first, Sunset Glow. I'm gonna use this Ray Morris brush and let's see. There's the loveliest glow on this blush, really pretty. Um, Ryan, see a little bit of my Clay de Poe blushes that I love so much. Maybe a tad bit more glow, well, yeah, maybe a tad, maybe a few, just a little bit larger particles in the reflective quality. I'm gonna take this one right here. I'm just gonna pop that on. And I chose this one because I think it is deeper. So I'm just popping that on. How pretty, that's really beautiful. Okay. And then let's take a little bit of that ambient lighting powder, this one again, that warmer one, and I'm going to go over this just to see what we can do about bringing that forward. Pretty. I'm going overboard with this powder right now. I usually don't put that much clay de po on there, but that's beautiful. Okay, and then let's go in with um, something I don't really love, but we'll do this anyway, just so you can see the highlighter right here. Oh yeah, that's definitely one of the beaming kinds of highlighters for sure. Oh gosh, my blemish here. Went a little bit overboard on the blush, just so you could see it though. Really wanted you to be able to see it. We're gonna use the warmer, this one right here, to just apply to the front and blur. You can see how that just blends in with my skin really nicely. Peachy Tone does a little bit of color correcting. Oh, I missed this powder. I haven't used it for a while. Let's use this one just so you can see it. Um, I'll put it under my eye. Okay, so that's the difference. Yeah, you can definitely see a difference in the palettes. Like this just looks like my skin. While this is more illuminated, you see a lot more light coming forward. So even though that is geared, this one's more geared towards lighter skin tones. I think if you are medium, you can use this um, for different purposes. So I would go in with that butterfly palette and do exactly that just to bring out the bone structure. Okay, let's go in with the blushes. They are beautiful. So I'm gonna use this all over the cheek and then do a pop of color. And there's like a golden glow to this one that's really beautiful. I don't know if you're catching that, but you can see it's got a golden sheen to it. Beautiful. And this one goes on kind of like a pinky gold combined, um, a little bit softer than say this blush. This is pretty bold. This is beautiful. Ooh, I love this. So it's got a glow, but it's a, like it's a golden glow and it really just blurs those lines for where you begin and end your blush. So, oh, that's really pretty. Okay, I love that blush. Okay, this one, and then we're gonna take a pop of color. I'm gonna take that lighter blush again and just blend it all together. Beautiful. Oh yeah, Elephant is gorgeous, but I definitely will use Butterfly as well just for that, um, the clay de po effect. This is an old NARS brush. I believe this is similar to the color in this pink. It's emphasizing the gold shade in that blush. Okay, this is gorgeous. I am not a highlighter person, but that's stunning. Ooh, okay, yeah, the elephant. But you can see like when I smile, there's a, it does emphasize texture. It's not bad, but it definitely highlights that I have a little bit of texture there. But that's something I'm willing to compromise with this Highlighter. Ooh, lovely. This one or this one? Let's do this one. Down the bridge of the nose, the this one right here. So just the most subtle glow. It's so pretty. So let me try the two lips for you in the Jaguar collection. A light one, Passiflora, which I think is gonna be a little light for me. And we also have here Orchid. This is Passiflora. 
It's just cool. So if you like a cooler lip, then you might really like this. This is Orchid. Oops. Ooh, dramatic. Okay, I don't think this goes with the cheek really because the cheeks are quite um, warm, but we're gonna leave it because it's a stunning color. Those of you who are new here, this hair is all due to the <laughs> Dyson Air Up that I love so much that I have thought about for years and finally purchased it. Has solved so many issues for me with hair. I'm not a hair person, but every time you use it, it's just so easy to use and it comes out like this with no work at all. So I love it. Going in with this very fancy fragrance. If you saw the unboxing, make sure it's not falling out there. It's the Cavour. And someone was asking if this bottle is heavy. It is heavy. It's quite, uh, luxurious feeling it's just the weight of the bottle so i'm going to just spray a little of it beautiful it's complex but not too complex has a freshness about it a floral take on it but nothing sweet or heavy i don't like sweet heavy fragrances so this one is beautiful okay so i just looked in the mirror and this is a lot of makeup at once i know but i wanted to show you the colors and talk about each of the items. Starting with the Jaguar palette, it's beautiful. I love it. I honestly was not sure what to do with it though. I knew I loved the colors, but because you have this really dark shade and a really light shade and there was nothing really for the crease, can I say really some more? I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but then I thought about that Pat McGrath method of just laying that deepest shade down first and then going over it with another shade just to kind of give it dimension, some depth. So that's what I thought I'd do with that. I love it. I love the blue. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and I liked that Isam eyeliner with it. It was really pretty. Love this palette if you're thinking about it. The Isam eyeliner, very nice. That sapphire shade. I feel very glowy right now um, from the palette. Usually I would go in with the um, Perfect Blur Powder by Chantecaille just to mattify the center but I'm going to leave it as is today. And then the mascara was nice. I think I need to do one eye at a time though. That was the issue. I think it dried too much in between, but definitely lots of volume and length. As for the lip shades, so the lighter one, it was pretty, but I think if you have a cooler tone, it'll be really beautiful on you. And then this is gorgeous, this orchid shade, really pretty. Like I said, it's a lot for what I have on right now, but I wanted you to be able to see the color. And I love the formula. Lip cheeks are beautiful, nice and hydrating, easy to wear. Oh, also, as I was doing my hair, I noticed we got to 19,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. I mean, by the time this goes up, it might change because it fluctuates and then it's down to 18.9 again. But if it's gone down, we're very close. So thank you so much all for your support and for joining us. It's just exciting to see where this channel's going because I think 10,000 was my goal. <laughs> We're already beyond expectations here and I just appreciate you watching, subscribing, leaving all the lovely comments. And I think this is one of the nicest communities. I feel like there's a little core group of us that have similar subscribers and it's such a great, a very positive place on the internet that is kind of rare. So thank you so much for being here and for being so positive. So, so I just wanted to say that I got really excited. Okay. Sorry, back to these palettes. Uh, yes, I was not expecting, I don't know much from this palette. I just kind of wanted to pick it up and compare it for you just so you could see what it was made of. But these powders, the lighter ones might just satisfy that, uh, need that I have now for the Chantecaille, no, not Chantecaille, Clay de Peau, um, Luminizing Face Enhancer that I love so much, number 18 from the previous collection, the one they are no longer making, because the other two digit face enhancers are too cool. So this one has some warmth to it, diffused light. Ethereal light and diffused light, those two powders I use, one under the eye, one here, they are not new products, um, but I don't think I would have ever tried them had I not gotten that palette. The blush is beautiful. It's pretty, it's just be prepared if you are light in skin tone, that's gonna pop on your skin um, because I'm medium and it's still quite vibrant. So just be prepared if that's what you want. I think it'll look really pretty, but maybe just balancing it appropriately with everything else. Like I probably wouldn't put a bold lip like this with it, but it's, you know, do what you want to do, but just know that it's going to be something 
really prominent. And then elephant, yes. You got excited about elephant, I got excited about elephant, and it's worth the hype, I'm gonna say this one. It doesn't look exciting, but everything is very usable here, including that highlighter, because it just complements the glow of this blush so well. Really, really pretty. I am impressed with this. I like all the shades. So one thing with these Hourglass palettes is there's usually a shade where I'm like, mm, I don't really love that one. I didn't need to have it. I'm not gonna use it. I don't think there is a shade in here that I wouldn't use. They're all beautiful. So this is a kind of like a rare thing with Hourglass in that you might actually use all of them. Typically I'll hit pan on one or two of the shades, but not all of them. But these are all really stunning. Um, so I will do a side by side with Tiger just because you requested it. Otherwise I was just going to use, just going to use Tiger by itself. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Do you want to see the Cougar palette with that? Do you want to see the Tweed palettes with that? I have all four, like I said, I have not featured any of them on my face yet. I could pull for one of those. Let me know, I'll do that one next. These two are existing, everything else is new in there. If you wanna know which ones are new versus existing, check out the unboxing swatching video because I talk about each color there and what is new as of these palettes. And also I can't remember if I do it right here or right now. So go back to that video and check it out. But let me know what you think of these palettes. I know you got excited about Elephant and Tiger. I think those were the two that you were most excited about. Let me know if you've received them, what you think. But I am impressed and I actually was not going to purchase them because I feel like I've purchased them since I started making them how many years ago? I don't even know, 60 years, something like that. Um, as long as I've been on YouTube, yeah. I've been purchasing them and I feel like sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't use them, like that pink one from last year, I didn't really use that at all. But I thought, let me just get them because I do it. It's like tradition now, I just get them anyway and I'm so glad I did, at least these two. We'll see about Tiger. Very happy to be including these in my routine. Really lovely products. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other, stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.